Hey everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of The Completionist New Game Plus. The show where I revisit games I've already completed to find out if my opinion has changed as I've become an older and wiser gamer. That and the first 120 episodes of The Completionist are no longer on this channel. They're on the internet somewhere. If you want to watch them, you totally can, but this is a very different show. If you want to update on that and what happened here on the channel, you can give a click into the description down below. Take a look at that video that explains everything up until this point. Longtime fans of the channel and The Completionist show will recognize this room. This is my bedroom. This is in fact still my bedroom. This is where it all started six years ago. New Game Plus is a show about not only me revisiting these games and my opinions from years ago, but to re-experience these games alongside you guys, the fans at home, who have followed me throughout all this time. This is going to be very different from the older episodes you've known to love and care about. I'm not going to sit here and reminisce the nostalgicness of the show itself. I might share some behind the scenes secrets or stories or maybe things that were happening in my life during the time I was completing these games in the older episodes, but overall, this is going to be a very different show. And you know what? That's okay. Sometimes different is okay. It's going to be a learning process for all of you at home as much as it is for me and the team who make the show. This show is for you, the fans, both new and old. We've got 120 games to complete, so what better place to start with the very first one than the one that started my entire career here on YouTube, Mega Man X. For young beardless Gerard, Mega Man X was a revelation. Everything that made the original Mega Man games great was still there, with some massive improvements and some unbelievably clever ideas. This game was made for childhood me. So much to do, so much challenge, so much to learn, and that damn art style. It was the perfect SNES game. It's so perfect, and I've played it so many times on the internet, that I've got the boss order practically tattooed to my brain. But does it hold up? When I first reviewed it many years ago, I definitely thought so, and I gave it my completionist rating of completed. And as far as I'm concerned, before I even get into this game, I'm probably going to bleed that again. Things have changed a lot in the last six years though. I myself have played a hell of a lot more games, so, so many more games, but even the gaming landscape has changed dramatically. There's even a roguelike Mega Man X inspired game that came out called 20XX. The video game landscape has shifted dramatically since I started my career here on YouTube. It's inevitable that my tastes are going to change over the course of my time as the completionist. So will I continue to adore one of my favorite games of all time? Let's find out. Yes. When the Super Nintendo was released in 1990, the big name games came quickly along with it. Super Mario World and Link to the Past both came out in the console's first year. Even classics like Pilot Wings and F-Zero were introduced at launch. But one name was conspicuously missing from the list of NES stars making their way into the new generation. Mega Man. To make matters worse, Capcom continued to release NES Mega Man games, with Mega Man 5 and 6 dropping before a single entry on the SNES. Clearly, they had to be working on something huge for the next generation of Mega Man. What else could they have kept us waiting for? Mega Man X was the first time the Blue Bomber made his way into the 16-bit world, and whew, boy, what an introduction it was. From that point forward, it was all Mega Man X all the time. X himself had seven sequels, plus several spin-offs, including... And we're not even mentioning the games Mega Man X influenced, most notably 20XX, Shovel Knight, Mighty No. 9, and Azura Striker Gunvolt. But really, there aren't as many Mega Man X clones as you think there would be. It's not just that Capcom had the market corner on that style of game, but the industry was changing. 3D games were just on the horizon, as was the explosion in popularity of Metroidvania games. As a result, Capcom was really the only one making these games modeled after the Blue Robot Dude's Adventure. 
Adventures. Up until recently, Capcom really were the only ones making Mega Man X style platformers, or at least the good ones anyway. And I think that's why Mega Man X holds such a special place in gaming history. It's a one of a kind series, one that no one else has truly been able to master. Even as a young kid, as soon as I picked up that controller to play, I somehow knew that Mega Man X was something special. It stuck in my memory for years as one of my favorite games of all time. And that's why I wanted it to be the very first episode of The Completionist. Something you guys might not know is that I spent six or seven weeks researching, writing, editing, and completing that very first episode. And it was my passion for Mega Man X that kept me going all that time. Oh, and caffeine. And that's how I became best friends with energy drinks. No matter what, Mega Man X will always be something special to me because it was the game that made me realize that I would be completing games every single week for the rest of my life. And here we are, doing a game a week for the rest of my life until I die. I might not have been aware of it when Mega Man X first came out, or even when I first reviewed it, but looking back now, I realize that Mega Man X is the adult version of the original Mega Man. And no, not that kind of adult version. It's darker, it has a deeper plot, and Mega Man's support system that is his family is completely absent. This is a game about a lone robot with no identity, trying to save the world and live up to the example of his hero, Zero. For a little backstory, Mega Man X was created by Dr. Light as a futuristic android who could think and feel for himself. He was then sealed away to be awakened when the world needed him most. Meanwhile, an entire robot civilization was built based on his technology. Unfortunately for all involved, a virus spread that turned a ton of the new robots evil, or Maverick as they're known. To stop them, Mega Man X arises to the occasion, meeting up with a group of reploids known as Maverick Hunters, led by the famous Zero. Later on in the X franchises, it's hinted that Zero was created by Dr. Wily, the rival scientist to Dr. Light and villain of the original Mega Man series. I think the biggest focus for people approaching Mega Man X is that you do not have to have played any other Mega Man. Having played a few of them is a bonus, but it's not required. More importantly, the tonal shift from X in the original Mega Man is fascinating. In the originals, we have this Mega Man that is all powerful from the very beginning. Tons of life, gets weapon power-ups, and saves the day. But this Mega Man, Mega Man X, is weak, and that's the theme of the game. Becoming powerful and stronger to conquer anything that may be in your way. X starts off weak and looks to zero for its inspiration, and this essence is something that not only becomes one of the main focuses of the X franchise, but it becomes the biggest reason as to why X is more important than Mega Man, to me at least. As I jumped into that oh-so-familiar first level of Mega Man X, a wave of glorious nostalgia rolled over me, just like it did six years ago. This is the era I grew to love gaming the most. Right away, sprinting across the city landscape as things exploded around me, fighting off cartoonish but wonderfully designed enemies, all the while shooting to the right in classic Mega Man fashion. This was my game. This is what blew my mind when I was but five years old, and it made me want to become a gaming legend. I know this game so freaking well, I can practically beat this game using the Nintendo GameCube Donkey Konga drums. Was it a dumb thing to do? Hell yeah, it was. Did I actually beat the game? No, but you get my point. Last time around, I complimented the sharp, crisp, graphical presentation of the game. And yeah, surprise, surprise, I still think this game stands out. Every single level has its own distinct style, every enemy type is wildly inventive and unique, and every boss is straight up innovative compared to the original Mega Man games. Enemy placement is truly a wonder to me. Just in Capcom deciding what enemies go where turns every little section of a stage into a mini tutorial that doesn't ask much of you other than to use the tools you have to get past this particular section. The further you get into the game, the easier your tool selection will become. Really, Mega Man X is one of the most beautiful SNES games ever made, and I'll fight anyone about that. And even though there was a remake on the PSP, I still think the original 16-bit SNES version is the one to play. And for those of you who have iPhones, do not play the redone version on mobile devices. Just trust me on this one. Do not even think about downloading it. System 
systems I would recommend playing it on, however, include the Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo Wii U, the Nintendo Wii, or if you were lucky enough to grab one, the SNES Classic. There obviously has to be something special about this game to warrant its re-release on so many platforms. And the sound, oof, my goodness gracious, the sound in this game. We have had a huge resurgence in retro games with the likes of Shovel Knight, Undertale, and Owl Boy, but Mega Man X is the OG of simple chimes, trills, and 16-bit blasts that will absolutely rock you with their raw power surging through your robot bad boy frame. The music is also perfectly tailored to every level's theme. From the cool ass frozen over hell tune of Chill Penguin's level, to the outright banger of a track backing up Armored Armadillo. Seriously, listen to this freaking track. Now, the major only difference on where I stand now on the music is that, while I love it all the same, we've been blessed with far more covers and remixes of those familiar tunes. In fact, the guys over at OC Remix did an incredible arrangement of all of the best tracks from all of the Mega Man X games, and I highly recommend listening to it. It's free, and you know what? I'll save you a step. It's in the description box below this video. Enjoy. But before I go too deep into a spiral of listening to every single Mega Man X track on repeat, let's talk gameplay. We should do that, right? Yep, let's get right to it. Just like in every Mega Man game before X, you spend most of your time running, jumping, and shooting directly to either side of you. If you've only ever played the NES Mega Man games, which I also highly recommend, you'll feel right at home here. But then, things get wild. X has new movement options, including a dash and the ability to jump up walls. Gone are the days of getting stuck on levels because you can't make that one stupid jump. Hello, faster, more agile Mega Man. Thanks for the upgrades, Dr. Light. Previously, I had mentioned that gameplay feels precise, and a veteran like myself to Mega Man only gets better and can pull off some pretty quick and complicated maneuvers with these improved movement options. And that's even before you upgrade X's suit completely or even get the boss weapons. There's four armor pieces hidden throughout the levels of the game that give X a permanent boost. There's the helmet, which allows X to take less damage from falling debris, as well as be able to bust his head through certain blocks to open up secret areas. There's upgraded armor, which makes him take half damage from enemies. There's the boots, which lets you dash all over the place. And there's the arm upgrade, which lets X charge up to a third shot. This shot also can be used with the weapons you collect from the bosses for a really cool and overpowered effect. There's also eight heart containers, one in each stage, which gives X more meter to his health bar. And finally, there's four or sub tanks, which lets you refill your health bar whenever you'd like, providing you fill it up. All of these upgrades will help you fight your way through all eight of the initial levels, eventually making your way to the Sigma stages, where you'll have to face off against the last boss, Sigma. But, as always in the Mega Man franchise, you'll also have to beat all eight bosses again. Sound familiar? It should, because the format of Mega Man X is exactly the same as every Mega Man game that came before it. It works like this. You fight your way through a level, eventually getting to a boss, and when you beat that boss, you get a weapon that's themed after that particular big baddie. That weapon can then be used for the rest of the game and will be the weakness of another boss you will face off against. Mega Man veterans know that there's a very specific order you need to beat the bosses in order to make these games as easy as possible, and Mega Man X is no exception. While these eight bosses are fun and clever puns across the board, BOOMERQUANGER! <coughs> And there is definitely a clear order of what bosses you need to take down. Some of the best moments in my gaming experiences came from making my own route. That's always been a staple in the Mega Man games. Pick the stage that you want to conquer, and sometimes you can snowball into an even scarier and faster build depending on your skill. Mega Man X isn't just a boss rush though. Each of their levels are themed after their particular abilities, and they're beautiful to look at. Oh and to die in. While there aren't any excessive amounts of collectibles in X like more modern games, exploring each of the eight levels is still satisfying. No matter what, you're gonna find interesting enemies, new challenges, and even a secret or two. A nice little touch from the folks at Capcom is that whenever you kill a boss, the moving parts from your battle can fall into other levels. If you slay Launch Octopus's level before going to Sting Chameleons, which you should do for the optimal boss order, the water will have flooded Lizard Guy's forested zone. You can even freeze over Flame Mammoth stage if you beat up Chill Penguin before headed that way. You know you're doing something right when you are single-handedly destroying ecosystems, robotic and organic. 
The result is a game full of attention to detail that makes the whole experience feel just as powerful and awesome as the character you are playing as. Capcom went through this game with a fine tooth comb to ensure its quality. There are so many little surprises hidden throughout the world, it makes Mega Man X a game that you can play over and over again. It's that good. The most important aspect to me as a completionist is being able to enjoy your journey as much as possible. There will be tons of challenges you face when you play games. Some will reward you for your advantageous approach to completing everything you can, while most will make you realize that completing games will most likely end in you feeling very empty for doing something really difficult and receiving nothing in the end. And sometimes, if it's a new game, you may even have to unlock achievements! Yay! But for now, let's talk about getting all the secrets in Mega Man X. When you've reached the last four Sigma stages, there's one more stop you can make before you wrap up your journey to the last few bosses of the game. This game features one of my most favorite completionist bonuses ever, and you simply get it for getting everything. If you revisit Armored Armadillo's stage after getting every item in the game, which includes all eight heart containers, energy tanks, light upgrade capsules, and you acquired the eight boss weapons, play through the stage as you would. When you get to the very end of the stage, climb up to the very top and grab the health pellet and either save and quit the stage or jump off and die. Personally, I recommend dying, but you'll need some extra lives, and you can farm for them in this stage. After doing this several times, on that final time, you'll get another Dr. Light capsule, but this time, Dr. Light is dressed as Ryu from Street Fighter. Yup, Capcom took the most iconic move from Street Fighter 2 and threw it into one of their most popular games. Now you can one-shot kill every boss in the game, as long as you've got full health. Which, when you're as skilled as me, you get into that zone of wasting full energy tank pops just out of principle to one-shot nailing a boss or two. Or almost all of them. I have a problem, I'm sorry. This right here is the perfect completionist bonus because it rewards you for going above and beyond to getting everything, and it gives you something that you don't have to necessarily use to get by. It's a fun easter egg one-hit mechanic that requires some skill. It requires you to not get hit and to dodge the bosses and directly give them that finishing blow. In my playthrough of Mega Man X, there were four deaths, an hour and a half of total playtime, Eight main stage bosses defeated, but it's a Mega Man game, which means I have to fight them all again, so really 16 main stage bosses defeated, eight heart containers and four energy tanks collected, five capsules of Dr. Light activated, and one game re-completed out of 120. 119 left to go. Whew! We got this! Overall, Mega Man X is the complete package. It's one of the best looking and best playing games of the SNES era, and there's a reason it's a classic. It's timeless. It looks good in 2017. It's no surprise that the first one in the entire Mega Man X franchise is, in fact, the best one. Every little bit of Mega Man X is lovingly crafted and makes you want to see all that it has to offer. It's absolutely worth playing long enough to get you to take every last bit of it in. Now there's no big reward for seeing it all, but there doesn't have to be. There's no need for new modes because the one that's already in the game is perfect. There's no need for a new item to run the game in again with because it's perfectly tuned that anything else might break it. It's these reasons that makes me torn on the PSP version of the game. Mega Man X Maverick Hunter. While that adds a lot more content to the game, it's very unnecessary. Hard mode and playing as vile, sure, I get it, but it's not really needed. Mega Man X doesn't need anything else to make it better because it's already about as damn near good as any platformer is going to get. And as a completionist, going that extra mile for the Hadouken, 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 whatever you want to pronounce it, is just the right amount of extra needed in a game like this. So, with that in mind guys, Mega Man X still receives my completionist rating of Complete It. Complete it. That's all time we have for today guys, so please let us know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. A massive thank you to the Patreon supporters, the patrons to the right of the screen right here. These guys are what make the show happen. Honestly, 
it feels good to do these episodes again and it's kind of scary but i'm excited to do it again because i have all these awesome people here to keep us going for the next few years i'm so grateful for you guys this is going to be a learning process as we go forward uh if you want to check out the vod of me completing mega man x live on twitch you can click or tap on that right here on screen and be sure to check out all of our new videos here on that one video gamer every tuesday and every friday I'll see you guys next time for another brand new episode of The Completionist New Game Plus. As for me, I got a lot more games to complete, so I'll see you around. Bye!